Now let's go into it. You have your album, Confessions. Yes. Take me through that process and creating it. And, you know, this is a, a opera um, album. It is. So it's classical song. Classical song. Mm -hmm. And you are a soprano. Mm -hmm. So take me through the development of the album, um, the journey, and show the viewers why you are Grammy nominated. <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh, talk about it. It is such a saga. So it all starts with a friend. My pianist, the woman who I started working with, like moment one when I came back to singing when I was 29, her name is Joy Schreier. She lives in DC. And I believe really strongly in kind of like honoring people's investments in your life. You know, when I started singing again, she was coaching me through songs. She was helping me with style, with language. And um, not only is she just a fantastic pianist, she's one of my best friends. So at some point she said, Laura, I heard this song cycle. We call them song cycles when it's a group of songs that have been written by one composer intended to be performed together. So she said, I heard this song cycle that you need to know about. Like when I heard it, I immediately thought of you. It is so you. And so we actually had a hard time tracking it down. This is like just before kind of anything you wanted to find on the internet, you could find on the internet. This was, I don't know, even, I think it was like 2009 or 10. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but the internet, is you know <laughs> constantly changing yeah. and so we had a hard time tracking down the composer but we finally did we emailed her out of nowhere and we said we love this song cycle is there any way um it was originally written for soprano piano um, cello and violin and i said is there any way you could do a transcription for just soprano and piano and she you know we'd love to use it for competitions was kind of my idea and she said yeah absolutely her name is clarissa Saad. she's the best um so she wrote us this transcription um i ended up winning a lot of competitions because of that song it's called uh, turn back the clock but that's part of the whole journey so i i had this song cycle that felt so me so perfect and i was like every time i sang it people said where do i find a recording of this but like you couldn't even buy a score of this like it did not exist right so I, I had it in my mind, like so many, this is when you see the market wants something, you have it in your mind, like how do I provide this thing to the market? So the whole idea for this CD started in like 2010. And, but you know, you need money, you need, I needed a rest, the rest of the CD. And so I started going down this path of, of trying to curate the rest of like what goes with, what makes this song cycle turn into an entire album that people want to hear, that is music and composers that I want to promote, that feels very, um, not just beautiful, but like meaningful. Um, and so it took me a few years to kind of say, this is what I want to put on my CD. And then I um, had a baby. Well, <laughs> so many things happen in my life. Okay, so. <laughs> we, we got time, let's break it down. Oh God. Let's break it down. So um, I don't even know where to start. Okay, so my husband after law school, <laughs> He started, um, he um, got a grant from, or not a grant, he got a fellowship from Stanford University to go to Afghanistan and start a law school at the American University of Afghanistan. So so at that point, you know, before when we when he was going to go to Morocco, he was like, you know, do you want to come? And I was like, yes. And then he said, you know, I want to go to Afghanistan. Do you want to come? And I was like, <laughs> because at that point I'd started singing again and I was having a little bit of, 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 you know, traction. And I said, if, if I go this time, I can't walk back again. Like I, there, I have come this far to come back. I can't leave again and expect to come back again. So I said, you know, I'm going to stay in New York and DC kind of split my time between there. And then I'll come. I visited him every couple of months, uh, there. Um, so at that point, I'm, I'm pulling together all of the strands of what I want to record, getting agreements from the composers. And then um, my husband got another job in the Virgin Islands. So we moved to the Virgin Islands. And then like surprise, I um, was going to have a baby. And that wasn't expected necessarily. And so that changed timelines. Again, I've got this CD that I, I've told composers, like I'm going to make this CD. And then all these major life things happened. So finally, after, when the baby was a year old, um, I got into the studio and started recording the CD. And a month after I started recording it, um, we had the hurricanes in the Caribbean. Um, and so I had planned to go back and record the rest of the CD just a couple months after I started. But 
everything was blown into the ocean my entire life. I didn't have, I was so traumatized. I still had this baby. We, you know, we didn't have electricity for months. And it was just like there was, like the CD became the very last thing on my mind. Um, and it wasn't until um, 2019, I think, that I finally got back in the studio and recorded the rest of it. And then, so there's this huge gap in the middle of the project <laughs> yeah. of just recording it. And then I had these files. I had um, the things I'd recorded, but I was working a lot. And being a mom and trying to be a working singer was overwhelming. And I, I, I knew that like I had these recordings that I needed to figure out a way to get them from my computer <laughs> into a physical form that I could sell to people. But like... I could, I only had enough mental space for keep my career going, be a good mom. And I could not think about that. And then the pandemic happened and I was sitting on, on an island in the middle of the Caribbean with no gigs. And suddenly I had all the time in the world to work on the CD that I had on the burner since 2017. And I called up a producer that I had worked with on a previous project that he'd pulled me in for. His name is Bob Atia, and he's got a label called Yarlung in LA. And I said, hey, I know you you usually put out your own projects that you've recorded, but I have these files and here we are, both of us, we're sitting around, we can't do what we do. Is there any way you'd be interested in releasing this CD? And he jumped at it and he said, you know, it's, I think it was July or something. He said, let's get this thing out by November, which is like an insane amount, like short, short, short amount of time to try to put a CD out. But we did it and it came out November 20th last year. And, you know, I keep, I always wonder, like, if the pandemic hadn't happened, like, would it still be just sitting in my computer somewhere? <laughs> would you not be Grammy nominated? Right yeah. Now? <laughs> this is awesome. Um, and as you're talking you're bringing me back to why I started this podcast. Sometimes when you watch people, you look at people who are doing great things, you're going to be at the Grammys and it's like, wow, like A to B. Look at where Laura's at. But it's not, it's never like that. Never. <laughs> and the beauty about podcasts and sharing these platforms and telling the story is that you get to unpack the person. You know, just being a mother is hard. It is. In general, right? Yep. <laughs> so, and now you're in the Virgin Islands. Um, your husband just sounds amazing. He is. <laughs> right? So he's doing all of these things. He's unpacking and he's making real world change. Now you're making real world change, but throughout this whole process, you're still trying to find time to continue your passion and do what you love. And like when we talked about in the beginning of this episode, it was passion. It was something that you knew you was going to do. You had support systems. It was this whole, so many things happening that's leading you back to something that's inevitable. Um, and it's just so wonderful to hear these things and talk about this real journey and give this real perception of what it takes to really be successful or to be at the top of your profession. Um, it's never as black and white as social media, the internet, you know, you know, blogs or whatever, all of those things may make it seem like it is. Um, so salute to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm excited. We should send this a uh, clip to all the Grammy nom nominees that's voting <laughs> to let them know that this is more than just an album. This is this is a masterpiece. This is your life work. Um, and to be able to be nominated with all of that that you had to deal with in this whole process is just amazing. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. Um, but let's let's continue to unpack it. Let's continue to talk about it. I cannot believe my eyes. Is this some sort of joke? Perhaps I'm in the twilight zone, perhaps my mirror broke. This isn't me, how could I be the girl I'm looking at? I'm ultra thin, I'm bones and skin, is that a lump of fat? Wasn't it just yesterday, my calendar replete? With guys who plea on bended knee for us to simply meet. But now I spend my nights at home, repress my appetite. I starve myself, wake up alone, and still have cellulite. Hide all imperfections, trying to fit in. Why can't we accept it? Ladies, we can never win. 
That was Turn Back the Clock from Confessions by Clarice Assad. My new CD, Confessions, is available now on any streaming platform or wherever you purchase your CDs.